sit here before you literally completing eight years of 24-hour, seven-day-a-week vigil. In other words, the occupancy of this church. Um, no other church, I believe, in the history of the Roman Catholic Church, at least in America, has, has succeeded in doing what we're doing. Come in off the street, and they sign up for when they want to stay, and this is today. Tomorrow we have an opening from 11 to 4. It'll get filled. Triplets that started here eight years ago, and they're now 13, and they sleep here every Friday night with their mother. This church is ours, the lay people. We're the ones that paid for it. We're the ones that have done all the work. That there was a reason for all of this. It's not like, you know, the cardinal and uh, the archbishop woke up one day and, and said, oh, I want to close 70 parishes. I mean, it was serious threats to the fabric of the archdiocese uh, that were threatening us. And these were occurring over multiple decades, and finally, you know, the wall was approaching us and we had to make a decision. St. Francis has always been a viable parish with over 3,000 registered parishioners. We always had six figures in the bank, no debt. We actually built a church and school in India and sustained it through the years. We're not in a situation where we believe that every church should stay open. There are churches in uh, disrepair. There are churches that have a minimal amount of, of attendance on a monthly basis. There are churches that don't meet the standards uh, on basic operating. Uh, St. Francis wasn't one of those. But I know there was a lot of vigorous discussion about this. There was a lot of analysis done. We are certainly doing even more analysis through pastoral planning. They have, a, they have parishes in the vicinity that can serve them. We always believed that the closure of St. Francis Cabrini was due to the value of our property versus the value of the parishioners of St. Francis Cabrini. I guess a picture speaks a thousand words. This shows you all the acreage and that it's prime coastal real estate. They have accused us of uh, this is a land grab. If this was a land grab, uh, the Cardinal would have uh, moved quickly on when the vigil started and he would have sold the property. I know that they're very angry with us that we're not pay, pray, and obey, but they need Catholics that are vested in their church. We've come home. We are the Catholics at home. Oftentimes I thought, well, maybe I should not be part of this, and I've struggled with it a lot, but in my heart, I just cannot leave what I really believe in. What we hope is that we can impress upon them that there are some wonderful uh, parishes in their direct vicinity which have their doors wide open for them. Your church needs a new organ. Your church needs new carpeting. Your church needs new cement work. Our church, yeah. We were always told it was our church. Yeah. Up until the day when it became their church because they needed to sell off the asset, to pay for the sins of their past, if you would, to replenish the coffers depleted by sexual abuse. It was our church up until that very last moment when nah, it wasn't our church anymore. They've launched this program, Disciples in Mission, and they're pairing collaboratives of churches together, two, three, or four churches. Why not pair us with another church? We have, we have an open invitation to Cardinal Sean O'Malley to sit down and meet us any place, any time, and talk about anything, including, um, including the parishioners repurchasing St. Francis. We're not going to sell it to them uh, so they can carve out a worship site of their own. We're not going to allow them to just purchase the church because again that's not how our parishes are constructed. They've, they've lost the, the basic premise that the people of the church and without us there is nothing for them. Should the final appeal decision be that they, they have to leave and they don't leave, um, what, what do you see transpiring because they say they're dug in? Well, and that's a sign that they're looking for conflict and we're not. The, we have said repeatedly that we are hopeful for peaceful and prayerful resolution. If they come in and arrest us, I'm ready. <laughs> At 79, I'm ready to go. Uh, there's one thing in my life I've never done, I've never been to jail. Mm -hmm. So you know what? Uh, I'm willing to go. The Cardinal's been patient, the Archdiocese has been patient, we've, we've tried to work with them over the years. We're not looking for conflict, but these are going to end, and I can't predict how, but they will end. They have to end. We're going to, we're going to basically stay in our home, and, and this is, we've all decided that. And, and they come in and arrest us and bulldoze our building. This community will stay together uh, regardless of what happens. Uh, after eight years, I think we're stronger spiritually than we've ever been under the, uh, the, the uh, guidance, uh, lack thereof, of the Archdiocese of Boston.